In this video, I'm gonna show you three quick Google Forms hacks for teachers that are sure to help you out with your online quizzes. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Mr. Cook's Corner, education for educators. This channel is all about helping teachers like you grow in your craft. If this is your first time watching, welcome aboard. Please consider subscribing if you like what you see today. Okay, Google Forms is one of the better versions out there for teachers when it comes to online quizzes for students. Today I want to show you three quick hacks to help you boost your quiz game. Let's start off with randomizing questions. Take a look. So here we are with a typical Google Forms quiz. In this instance, I've chosen a multiplication quiz of twos. Here's what the quiz looks like to a student. And whenever I refresh it, it's going to have the same order. It goes two by one, two by two, all the way to two by 10. So one cool thing that you can do is randomize the quiz questions. And to do that, you're going to click on the gear button and you're going to click on presentation and then you're going to click on shuffle question order. Once you save it, the quiz will now be random. When I refresh the quiz, it is now in a different order. I'll refresh again and it's in a totally different order. No matter how many times I refresh, I'm never going to get the same quiz twice. Up next is response validation. What that does is it makes sure that a student has to type a specific thing before he or she is allowed to go to the next part. So for example, in this multiplication quiz, I can type in letter answers, which are clearly not what is being asked, and I can still submit a response. So if I want to require a number answer, what I will do is I will go into the question and in the bottom right under the three dots, you're gonna click on response validation. From there, you have some specific choices. You can force the user to choose a number, text, a certain length, or a regular expression. In this case, we want a number. After that, you're gonna have a bunch of selections as to how to limit this number. It can be greater than, it can be less than, equal to, between. Since this is a multiplication question, I just wanna make sure that it's greater than zero. So I'm gonna make greater than zero. The last bit is to type in the custom error text. And all that is, is what you want it to say if the student doesn't follow along. Once you've typed it in, you're all set. Now, if I'm a student and I go into that same question and I type in letter answers, when I click away, there's my error message. And I must go back and type in a number before I'm allowed to submit. For those who teach writing, this comes in really handy as well. If I click on response validation and I choose length, I can have a minimum character count and give it a number such as 200. And now if a student gives an answer that's too short for your liking, when they click away, it tells you it must be at least the character limit that you've set. Great little way to help with writing. Okay, super quickly, on that Google form, you may have noticed that I had a customized banner for my multiplications quiz. If you're interested in learning how to do that, I got a super quick video for it right here. Go ahead and check it out if you got a second. All right, let's get back to the video. The last tip is to have a self-grading answer key. If you were to just type out a question and leave it as a short answer text and not add anything to it, you were gonna end up with a bevy of answers without it being graded. However, if you click on the answer key button, from there, you can add in as many correct answers as you like. So in this case, I've typed the number two, but perhaps your students type out the answer by accident. You can add that in. In this case, I've added four different ways to say the number two. It is case sensitive, so I wanna make sure I have all lowercase, capital T, and all caps. If you don't wanna mess with something like this, I do recommend going back and using a response validation to say it must be a number answer. But there are some questions that may be acceptable to have more than one different answer, especially with difficult spellings. So it's something to consider. Once you've sorted out the correct answers for the answer key, you need to then give it a set amount of points in the top right hand corner. If you like, you can even choose to provide answer feedback for wrong questions. You can type in exactly what you'd like to say to offer as a strategy, and you can even add an attachment or a YouTube video to show a process. Simply click the button, paste in the URL, and hit save. Once you've finished with all your questions assigning points and answers, you're gonna to go to the gear in the top corner, you're gonna click on quizzes, and you're gonna make sure that this button is turned on, make it a quiz. When a student takes a quiz now and they hit submit, they can view their score, and when they're viewing their results, any incorrect answers that you've added a video to will have both a feedback and a video. When you're ready to view your graded tests, you simply click on responses 
click on the green button for sheets and you will see a timestamp for every entry and here in the second column you will see a score. Everything is done for you. All you have to do is enter it into the gradebook. As always, there's plenty more where that came from. Why don't you check out one of these two videos to get yourself started? In the meantime, there's freebies down in the description below. Go ahead and check those out. We're all over social media at Mr. Cook's Corner. Till then, we'll see you next time. Bye.